19, 2022, we'll note that we have four committee members in the chamber and we have Alder Peckham with us on WebEx. So we have a full complement of the committee today. Um, the first order of business on our agenda is to consider the minutes of our previous meeting from December 20th, 2021, copies of which were in the packets. Um, any revisions necessary to the minutes? If not, I'll take a motion to approve. I vote. Motion from Peckham. Is there a second? Second by Herbst. Discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Item number two is to consider approval or denial of various license applications, and you have those in your packet for today. Um, we have one denial recommendation um, by our ordinance. Those individuals are allowed to address the committee. Um, is Reba Matelski with us this evening? Reba Matelski? Let the record show Reba Matelski has not attended tonight. Um, also on your events, list of events to approve tonight, um, we have one new event, um, and we asked the airport manager to attend tonight. Um, in the event that you have some questions about the event, it's called Wings Over Wausau, and it is an air show um, that is to happen this summer at the municipal airport. Um, obviously, large-scale attendance is planned for that event, and uh, we figured you may have some questions about the event before you approve the permit. Um, does anyone have questions? John, why don't you come up and just talk to us a little bit about the event, because there's some exciting stuff on deck at the airport this summer. I can speak for part of it. Okay. But, um, Wasa Area Events is actually the sponsor of the event. Mm -hmm. The airport is the location. Um, it's going to take place over two days on the 24th of June, which is a Friday, and there will be a larger scale event on Saturday the 25th. So, um, so far, negotiations have been entered into with AC Air Shows, which is an air show company who is doing all of the legwork for the air show performers, working with the FAA um, to make sure that everything is done to standard. Um, they've given us an example of an emergency plan to fill out, which I will be working with Allie tomorrow on. Okay. And obviously we'll be coordinating that with fire and police. Um, in addition to the air show, which will take place in the afternoon, I believe that uh, we're, the, I hate to speak for Wasa Area Events, but I'll tell you what I think I know. Uh, we're uh, we're going to have a car show with it as well, okay. which will take place in the park, which, we, which I call um, Airport Athletic Park, which is the easternmost mm -hmm. park on uh, Lakeview Drive. And then uh, it's called Wings Over Wasa. So one of the things discussed was that we would feature as our food for this event, uh, wings. Oh. So okay. um, we're trying to work with uh, local vendors and kind of have a something. I don't want to say it's going to be similar to the Balloon Fest because it's not going to be at all similar to the Balloon Fest. But um, obviously food will be involved and wings are what we're hoping that it'll be. Nice. Um, I think music, fireworks in the evening. Um, model airplanes, uh, aviation displays. Another thing that I'm trying to organize with the air show people is what we would call a parade of flight. So when you're an aviation person and you see an airplane fly over, oftentimes you look up and you recognize the airplane, you know what kind it is, you even know who's flying it. But um, the citizens of Wausau and the surrounding area may not have as much interest in aviation as I do, but we think that they should know who's flying over their airspace and that sort of thing. So what I'm trying to do is organize several of the airport tenants to do what's called a parade of flight. So in groups of three to five, we'll organize uh, aircraft of different types which will take off and they will do two circuits around the airport, low passes, plenty far away from the crowd, but we'll have an MC that would describe the airplane, maybe describe the pilot, describe its mission, tell a little bit about it, and um, after they make two passes, the next group comes through. We're going to do like four or five groups. That, that typically would take place just before the air show. But it gives some people something to look at, and it educates them about aviation in the airport and how people use the airport. And it'll be anything from small, light planes, uh, 
to the jets that fly out of the Wasa Airport so people know how businesses are using the airport as well. Nice. Committee members, any questions for John? And if not, we'll invite our representative from Wasa Events up. I have a couple questions about the event, um, specifics um, related to the event. Also, there, um, Tara brought up a good point. Um, we do have to uh, file paperwork with the Bureau of Aeronautics, mm -hmm. which I'm in the process of doing. I have had verbal conversations with them, and it looks like this is going to come off without a hitch. But as soon as we get the official paperwork back, everybody will know. Okay, perfect. Pete Valeska, Wasa Events. Welcome. Thanks. A um, couple questions about the event. Um, now, John did mention that there was going to be food. Are you also planning for outdoor alcohol? Um, there will be alcohol, yes. We'll have our bars just like we, we typically do. Okay. So, so um, with the, well, with the last balloon rally even, um, you know, you'll recall our ordinance has changed and that events that are held at the Wassa Downtown Airport, because the Wassa Downtown Airport is self-contained, are exempt from the fence ordinance. Mm -hmm. So you can allow people to take their drinks back to their lawn chairs and enjoy their entertainment without being enclosed as long as you're at the airport. So. Um, committee members, any questions about that or about um, anything else concerning the event? Okay. Um, with that, that, that was really all I wanted to know is where you, where you were at with the entertainment and the alcohol part. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Don. Uh, what are you going to be having for type of security? Are you going to be having emergency police officers or whatever to patrol to make sure that alcohol is not being abused and so on and so forth? Sure. So um, we actually just met uh, last week on Friday with the uh, police department, and I know uh, Fire Chief couldn't be there, but uh, we did meet and we talked about uh, a whole range of items. So we talked about number of officers that do need to be at the event. We talked about emergency police, uh, their availability, uh, planning for that. We talked about traffic flow patterns, um, so traffic flow out of the event. Uh, this will be a little different. Uh, in years past, uh, for the uh, Balloon and Rib Fest, we typically had to get uh, between 50 and 100 vehicles out of there immediately, and that created some logistics for us after, after each night's fireworks. We don't have to do that anymore because the air show itself is based at the airport, does not need to go anywhere. So it would be simply traffic going out. So we talked about traffic pattern of uh, Lakeview. Uh, Lakeview only goes to the right, possibly. And then Sturgeon Eddy only goes to the left, the north, so that there's a, a method of safety there for everyone. And then from um, <clears throat> past events at the airport, uh, fire had always had you know, some questions about how do we get apparatus in, how do you get apparatus out, what have you. So with not having to have a balloonist or whatever having to get in and out of there, we can use that first gate right off of Lakeview as our emergency in, emergency out. We talked about being able to move emergency equipment between the two ends of the airport, um, all of that. So there, there are significant improvements that we can make to make sure that, um, you know, both police and fire have uh, equal access to both ends of the airport. And then your servers will have the, um, or somebody at the point of entry will have the um, folks that are of age wristbanded, I assume? So uh, yes, we will be doing the, uh, the wristbanding, as you had talked about. The, um, with the airport being completely fenced, we're going to keep the alcohol within the fence, mm -hmm. the fenced of the airport. Uh, there will be uh, a wristbanding for age checks for, uh, for that, and there were, uh, no one without a wristband will be served at all. Okay. Um, you know, just to tack on a little bit from what John said, this is going to be a much more concentrated event. We're going to start later in the afternoon on Friday. Uh, you'll have the air show. You'll have a small period of time, uh, food and entertainment, and then the, the fireworks. And then Saturday, we'll start off with the, uh, the 5K in the morning. A number of events throughout the day. Uh, the entire event's going to be family focused, but then again, very concentrated where we've got a very tight window of the air show, uh, and then also uh, food and beverage and entertainment, and then fireworks again. And uh, we, when we had our meeting with the police department, we talked about the uh, safety box that we have to establish for the airport, for the uh, not only for the for the planes, but for anything on the ground. Mm -hmm. and uh, and what have you. So there's a lot of work that's going into this. Uh, in addition to putting together um, a standardized emergency plan that the uh, 
the city the city's asking for and that we'll work with uh, uh, the county on as well uh, we also have to establish a uh, FAA uh, emergency plan as well and we'll be working through that as well so so we'll have multiple layers of that mm -hmm. uh, in place uh, to ensure that uh, um, everything is handled appropriately um, and then from an insurance standpoint we have uh, all the appropriate uh, insurance coverages in place for, for an air show an Perfect. actual air show excellent anyone else have questions at all if not I'll accept a motion to accept or deny licenses as recommended by staff we have a motion by Herbst is there a second second by Wadinski further discussion seeing none members in favor signify by saying aye aye Can you unmute Pat so Pat can vote? Aye. And Pat votes aye. <laughs> opposed? No one's opposed. And so that item carries. Thank you, Thank you for coming in. Yep, thanks. Um, and that motion then also approves the rest of the events on their list as well. So we're good with that. Um, okay. Item number three is a hearing. Rent abatement request for the property at, located at 509 West Knox Street in Wausau. Uh, the tenant who is petitioning for rent abatement is Daniel R. Hempe II, and the landlord is uh, Your Neighbor Realty. Um, that's okay. We're just starting, so you're just in time. Okay, we'll switch to that packet. Okay, and are you Ted Bowman, sir? What's that? Are you Ted Bowman? Yes, I am. Okay, all right. Um, do you have any other witnesses tonight appearing at the hearing other than yourself? Oh, well, my wife will be up here, but I am a little camped, and so she let me have your steps, and I'm just trying to park. Okay, all right. And we have Mr. Hempy available by WebEx. Um, he's out of town currently. Yes. Um, so once we have uh, Mrs. Bowman, I think she's coming in now. Um, what we'll do is um, we'll ask the clerk to swear in all of the witnesses as a group. And uh, I believe the city also has um, a witness from the inspection department that will be presenting as well. All right. Okay. Do you now? Um, yes. So, um, yep, yeah, you guys can have these two chairs up front here if you like. Right. That way you have a microphone. Maybe test that microphone and just make sure that that microphone works. experience with those microphones up front is that you have to hold them fairly close um, okay. yep and so when when inspector Malzahn comes up we will actually have him address from the podium that way we've got microphones for everyone okay so yep you guys can have those two chairs there and uh, okay and so um, what we'll do is we'll um, start ourselves off here um, today we're we're conducting a hearing concerning housing code violations that are alleged to exist or have recently existed at the property located at 509 West Knox Street in the city of Wausau as a result of these violations a tenant at the property has filed an abatement hearing request form seeking to have this committee issue an order to abate rent at that premises for the period that the violations existed rent abatement is is authorized to be ordered by this committee pursuant to the Wausau Municipal Code following a hearing. This is the hearing on that matter. Uh, it looks like appearing tonight at the hearing, um, we have the tenant, Daniel R. Hempe II, and we have the property owners from Your Neighborhood Realty, Ted and Margaret Bowman, as well as um, Inspections Department Inspector Adam Malzahn. Um, any other witnesses appearing tonight for either side? Nope. Seeing none, we'll ask the clerk to swear in all of the witnesses as a group. Can you stand? Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm all military. I mean. <laughs> okay. Mr. Hempy, can you hear us okay? Yeah. Okay. 
Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give at this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you that? Yeah. Okay. We'll note that all the witnesses then have been sworn. Um, the violations which are alleged to exist or existed in the past at the property are contained in an order sent by the City of Wausau Department of Public Works Division of Inspection and Zoning dated October 25th, 2021. Have all parties received that notice? Yes. Daniel, have you received that notice as well? I believe I have. Okay. If I did, it's probably, the notice is probably sitting at my desk at home. Okay. This is an informal review hearing. It is designed to allow this committee to hear from both sides, landlord and tenant, about these violations. However, either of you may be re represented by an attorney if you brought one with you, and each of you may call and question witnesses for your side and cross-examine witnesses of the other party. Since this is an informal review hearing, there will not be a lot of rules as far as what information or evidence will be allowed. In this case, we will listen to all testimony that has reasonable probative value, meaning it tends to prove the issue in question. We will not hear testimony that is immaterial, irrelevant, or unduly repetitious. Examples of issues that are not relevant, that the tenant has not paid rent in the past, that the landlord does not agree with the fact that the city has this ordinance, that another tenant in the building has not complained about said violations, that no other tenants in other buildings owned by the landlord have problems in their units, etc. Examples of issues that are relevant, the nature, extent, and seriousness of the alleged violations, the length of time these conditions existed at the premises, and how they affected the tenant's use of said premise. Whether the tenant caused or contributed to the alleged violations, whether the tenant wrongfully refused to allow the landlord to make any repairs, and whether the violations were caused by factors or situations wholly outside of the landlord's control. Um, each of you may present other evidence such as photographs, bills for services, or other documents as long as they are relevant. Uh, we will need to keep a copy of these for the file, however. As the chair of this committee, it is my responsibility to decide what is relevant or not, and I may determine what is relevant by ending testimony or excluding testimony. Uh, the tenant will present their case first. The tenant has a burden of, pr of proving to a reasonable certainty by greater weight of credible evidence, which is also known as a preponderance of the evidence, that the landlord failed to correct one or more rent-impairing violations by the original due date in an order of the Inspection and Zoning Division. We will also hear from the Inspection and Zoning Division. The landlord will have the opportunity to put on his or her case thereafter, um, after the tenant has finished and after we have heard from Inspections and Zoning. Uh, it is the landlord's burden to show by preponderance of the evidence any claim that the landlord may have that a rent-impairing violation was negligently or willfully caused by the tenant to the tenant's guests or that the tenant refused to allow entry to the premises and this refusal prevented the landlord from making corrections in a timely manner. If the landlord makes a showing that the tenant's refusal to allow entry prevented the landlord from making corrections, the tenant has a burden to show that the refusal was reasonable under the circumstances. Either party may present evidence on the nature, extent, and seriousness of the violations, the length of time the conditions existed, and the extent to which the violation deprived the tenant from full use of the rented premises. This information can be used to determine the percentage of rent abatement, which should be allowed. Our hearing today is limited to one hour. Additional time may be allowed upon request, but at the sole discretion of this committee. All of the proceedings today shall be recorded on tape. A copy of the tape recording will be supplied to anyone requesting it at the requester's expense. Um, does anyone have any questions on that? No. Nope. Okay. Um, uh, if anyone is disruptive or fails to follow instructions, the committee has the right to end the meeting immediately and will make its decision based upon the information that has been received to that point. You will receive a written decision from the committee and a copy will be mailed to your residences. You will have 10 days from the mailing of this written decision to file a written petition with the city clerk asking this committee to reconsider its decision if you wish. Reconsideration will only be granted on the basis of a material error of fact or law, an error in the calculation of the award amount. The party who wants reconsideration of the committee's decision will have to serve copies of the petition on the other parties. The filing of a petition to reconsider the decision will not suspend or delay the effective date of the original decision or order. You'll also have the right to seek a review of the decision of this committee by the circuit court within 30 days 
of the service of the decision by mail. More information for that uh, will be included in the ordinance. The maximum total abatement authorized under the ordinance shall not exceed 95% of the periodic rental payment except where premises have been vacated under an order of the Inspection and Zoning Department pursuant to Wisconsin law. Um, with that, um, Mr. Hempe, do you want to go ahead and uh, present the facts of your case? My case is that um, I know Ted's trying to get the stuff done, Can we and turn I let him bit? do it on his pace. And I know he's going to get it done. But our, our agreement we had a while ago is the inside the stuff on the inside. Most of that, me and him have agreement of me repairing repairing some stuff in there was his okay. The outer stuff, I let him come anytime he wants and fix that. So I really have not much I to complain about because I told him about the things and I know he's been meaning to get over there and fix it. I know family problems and stuff can't come off to delay from. I understand that. So as I said, I know Ted's going to get the stuff fixed. And the stuff like painting and stuff like that, I'm getting done when I get back. I get carpeting laid already. So we're working on, between Ted, me, Ted, and Margaret, we're working on stuff for me to fix that I can fix in the house as long as it's up to there, okay, and standard. And some of the stuff when I, like, buy for the house, they take it off my rent. So we're working a good deal that way. So the work that you would perform um, as a tenant under an agreement with them um, is not work that would require licensed contractors to be used, correct? So you're not doing things right. like plumbing and electrical and all that stuff? No, no, no. I'm doing like the painting, just, you know, laying down a rug for the floor, and that's it. So the, the rent impairing violations that were noted in the notice um, included an issue with the kitchen floor, um, with the furnace. Um, apparently the um, condition of the bathroom, shower curtain, floor, and bathtub. Um, uh, damaged waste stack in the basement. Uh, scrap material in the basement. Smoke detectors missing. CO detectors. Well, the smoke, if you don't mind me interrupting. No, go ahead. It's, it's a long list. So I guess I, we're, are you still living in the property right now? Yeah, I'm still living there, but I'm still down in Milwaukee right now. I'm going to be back on the 16th. They got they got the carbon monoxide detectors, and they got they got all the smoke detectors put in. The basement is uh, cleaned up. Some of the materials that were down there is for a train table that I'm building that I got the okay from Ted and Margaret to do. Um, so. Um, most of the stuff they've been compliant, like the furnace, they replace it on their time. I don't push them. It's up to them when they got the time to get it fixed. Okay. Um, Committee members, do you have any questions for Daniel at all? Sure, go ahead, Tara. Mr. Humpy, this is Tar Tara Alfonso. I'm the attorney um, for the city of Was. Can you speak up a little bit because it's hard to hear you through sure. my phone. Sure. So my name is Tara Alfonso, and I'm the attorney um, advising the committee on this. One of the violations that was listed um, as potentially rent abatable was the kitchen floor is in repair. Is that your understanding that you're fixing the kitchen floor or is it your understanding the landlord's fixing the kitchen floor? Well, 
me and me and Ted had that discussion once before. He's got the tiles, the tiles in the box downstairs. We've had that talk about it before. He wanted me to put it down, but I told him I'd rather have him there to make sure it's done the right way. Because I've never done the linoleum floor. I've done laminate floor and I've done tile floor, but not linoleum. Okay, let's, so let's that move. Okay, part I'm leaving up to him. I understand that. Let's move on to another one. Um, there's a violation here that may be abatable that talks about a hole in the dining room ceiling shall be properly repaired and painted. Is that something that you agreed you were going to fix with the landlord, or is that no. something? No, he agreed to fix that. Okay, great, thanks. He agreed to fix it. The, he agreed to fix the, get the roof fixed, which they told me they have somebody that's going to be doing that, and they agreed that, that they are going to fix that hole in the ceiling. Okay, another violation um, that's on this list is the tile on the living room floor shall be removed and the floor made uniform and usable. Is that also something the landlord is supposed to fix or you had offered to fix? Okay, the tile on the living room floor, and I know where they're talking about, and so does Ted. Uh, Ted wants that left there because of the car he only wants the carpeting to go up to the tile because it, the room's 13, if I'm correct, 13 feet, he said. Why? And that's why he put the carpeting there. So I mean, you're, you're, he, you're he saying... Couple of days ago, he want he wants that tile left there. Okay, so are you? I just my question's pretty simple and straightforward. Did you agree that you would ever repair um, the living room tile on the floor or carpet over that? I would carp. I said I would carpet over that. Just so, lay the carpet over it. So you said you would put carpet over the living room tile. Yes, because okay. that's what we agreed on. Because okay. I was going to put a little bit of that carpeting I have there by the front, by the front door tiles too. Okay, and then my last, my last question is about the dining room and the bedroom floors. Did you agree to fix dining room and bedroom floors, or is that something that the landlord is supposed to fix? Me and him, we were, me and him and Margaret were talking about that. Uh, a couple of days ago, I told them I can get the limited floor put in as long as they they uh, give me the okay to go pick it up and put it in. Now, the bedroom floor got carpeting. Both bedrooms have got carpeting now. We, I already agreed with them that I would put carpeting down in there. Yeah. Okay. Now, these things that you agreed that you would fix that I've asked you about, are you required to fix those, or are you voluntarily fixing those? I volunteered to help them get it fixed. Okay. And I'm volunteering to fix it, help him get that fixed and looking nice again. Why did you volunteer to fix that? Because I want, I look at it as I want it to be a looking nice home, and I know he's, he's up there up there in age and he can't do a lot of it so if I volunteer to help him get it done then at least it relieves some of the stress and burden off of him. And if you fix these things or the things you have fixed is he um, giving you a deduction off of your rent for these things? He, some, some things yes like I just for the garage uh, overhead door, just open the opener, and Ted and Margaret agreed that we were taking money off my rent to pay, that they were paying me back by taking it off my rent for that opener for the garage. We and anything before I do anything in the house, I talk to them. And if they say go ahead and do it, I go ahead and do it. If they say go ahead and do it, just let me know the price and I'll take it off your rent. We work at it that way. Okay. Okay. And let me ask you another question. Is your lease um, with Mr. and Mrs. Bowman, is that in writing or is it a month-to-month -month verbal lease? It's 
it's a year later. And it's in writing? I don't know. I don't have the least whip yet. I think they I think they test it all out and it's on training, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I can ask them too and they can confirm that. And you pay six hundred Yeah, I I can't see it to really tell you if it's writing or not. So that part is a question that I would need somebody with sight to see and I'm not at home with the with the lease. Right. And your rent you're paying six hundred and fifty dollars a month, right? Yes. And yes. are you current on your rent? Yes, I'm always. I always pay on time with the with the rent. And you're paid and through always, through January. The, yeah, they they're happy. They, they're happy every time I get the rent to them. Okay. I call them like whenever I have the rent in the envelope at my house. I'll call them up. I will say I have the rent, and ninety nine percent of the time when Margaret can get the chance to come from. The store, she'll come down and pick it up. Uh, sometimes Ted, if he's coming over to fix something, he'll pick up the rent. But otherwise, I hold it for them until they're, they can come and get the rent. Okay, thank you. I don't I have need. anything else to ask you. I have, I have just a couple. I have just a couple of questions. Um, the, when was the last date that you occupied the home? Uh, December 2nd. That's because I left on December 3rd, and I've been up here for about a month. Okay. Um, committee members, any other questions for the tenant? Go ahead, Jim. Are these agreements between the tenant and the landlord, are they in writing so they won't be back with the problems in the future? They're not in writing. Um, Ted said he was going to get them to me in writing, and that's what I've been waiting. But we've been talking about it, and I said, you have to get it all in writing. Okay, so currently they are not written agreements for the work that you're supposed to do. No. Okay. Yeah. Alder Peckham has his hand raised on WebEx. Go ahead, Pat. Thank you. Uh, it seemed to me that when I read through the list, there were items uh, like the furnace shall be replaced by a professional HVAC uh, provider, and uh, there were uh, plumbing problems that shall be repaired by a professional plumber. Uh, where are we at with those items? Okay, the furnace has been replaced. Um, that's been replaced for almost two months now. About two months. Yeah, two months ago, because it got put in in November, I think it was 9th, 9th or 10th. So, Count me wrong, but I think it was one of those two days. Okay. It was, and it's been put in since. The plumbing, um, it's just the bathroom drain backing up, which we're just putting drain. He's just putting drain down there right now to see if it's unclogging. That doesn't seem to be meeting the requirement that inspections put on that compliance order. Um, it said get it fixed. It didn't say throw some Drano down there. And I think we yeah. can clarify that also um, when we have our witness from inspections over. Um, so the plumbing work, uh, other than some remedial action, has not been taken care of. The drain stack and, and uh, so, whatever has been backing so up in that shower is not, is not taken care of? Yeah, the, the shower backs up, it drains slow, but it backs up. All the other, like the bathroom sink and the kitchen sink are fine with draining. It's just the bathroom. And I've been working with him to try to get it fixed. Okay. And I've just been waiting for his time you know, 
I understand he's got so much, two other properties, too, to deal with. So I just go by, hey, he calls me and says, I'm coming over to do it. Fine. Come on over. I'm home. This, I guess I have a question as to the state of what's happening in that bathroom. What is backing up in that shower? Is it the gray water from the shower, or is it sewerage? No, it's whenever you have the shower running, the water just uh, piles up. It drains, but it drains really, really slow. When after you take a shower, it takes a while for it to go down. Okay. Okay. Does it, Dawn, go ahead. Uh, is it Mr. Hemke? I question, yeah. how long have you lived at this address? Um, I moved in at the, at the end of June, beginning of July, because I, uh, I did them a favor before I moved in, and I cleaned the whole house out for them and got it so I can move, move from my old residence to there. And I started paying, I think I gave her a security deposit in July and the, and the first month's rent in July. So, yeah, something like that. And I cleaned the whole entire house for them. Didn't even ask nothing for it. I did it as volunteer work for them. All they did is get the dumpster, which I asked them to do, and I cleaned the entire house and garage for them. I would say you've been an outstanding renter. I certainly wouldn't have put up with this, and especially after I read all the problems. Obviously, these problems were there when you moved in, and I'm surprised that you have put up and tolerated with this for this length of time. Thank you. Additional questions for the, for the uh, tenant? Okay, um, so we'll then conclude the tenant's testimony. Um, next, we'll bring up our representative from um, inspections and zoning, um, Adam Melzon. Adam, if you could come up to the mic and um, talk to us about your observations at this property when you were there. Hi, my name is Adam Malzahn. I work for the city of Wausau. I'm a property inspector since March of 2019. I do have some photographs and some letters from the inspections department. Okay. Did you want me to bring those up? Yes, because um, we'll actually review those um, as you're going through. Yes. Okay. And so. I guess give us a sense of you know what was happening at the property when you visited it to inspect as we're going through the photos here. Sure. Um, so my first look inside the property was October twenty second of twenty twenty one. Some of the things that stood out to me uh, that visit. Um, were the flooring. The flooring throughout the house was not in great shape. Uh, our code says that uh, kitchen and bathroom floors need to be impervious. And there is some problem with the kitchen floor. The floor tiles busted up. Not terribly. Uh, the, the major issue that I found at that visit was the hole in the roof in the dining room. Is that and this photo here? Correct. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that's under, I got that with the roof and interior ceiling pictures. In the pictures, in the pictures you can uh, also see the, uh, the roof is in pretty rough shape from the exterior photographs I took. Okay. And how many times have you been back to the property to reinspect it? I was 
I came back on November 11th after the furnace was replaced. So I give, uh, I give the property owner uh, credit for bringing in a licensed uh, professional to put in a furnace. So that was, uh, that was done, like Mr. Hemke said. So that is, that is great. Um, aside from the roofing and the interior ceiling issue, uh, one of the other things that Daniel didn't mention was on the plumbing side, I do have a picture of the other plumbing stack. There's two stacks in that basement. The, the photo I'm providing is on the western side of the basement, and that is the plumbing stack that I asked to get repaired. Okay. And that work has not been taken care of. Correct. What I revisited in... November, I do have a picture from that visit showing the stack not repaired. Okay. And it looks like, at least in the one photo as they were going around, that is the stack that you had photographed. It looks like it had been attempted to be sealed with silicone or something. Is that? Correct. Uh, yeah, the silicone on the clean out and then some other type of uh, sealing agent underneath the uh, the coupling there. Look like some kind of putty or something on that. Um, and then you also noted an electrical violation with a light fixture? Uh, that's correct. Uh, there is a electrical uh, box in the ceiling in the basement that needs a cover and then the electrical while well, the light is hanging from the box to in another location in the basement. Okay. And those open junction boxes have not yet been replaced? Not to my knowledge. Um, like I said, um, I've only been in the house twice. So when I was there on the 11th, those items were not repaired at that time. Okay. Yeah. Committee members, do you have any questions for inspections? Tara, do you have any questions? Yes, yes thank you. Um, you made a second inspection, and that was November 11th, you said? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. And um, have you made any other inspections since November 11th? Not on the interior. I have driven by the property, and I have looked at the property from the alleyway, though. Okay. And the roof has not been done? Not, not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, can we just go... Your notice of um, 10:22, just so that I can be clear. So, violation number one you indicate is the um, kitchen floor. Correct. So when you went on the 11th, was that done? No. No. However, you did give them till the 16th. Correct. Correct. Okay. And um, the second one, the furnace replaced, that's um, violation number two. That, when you went on the 11th, that was corrected. Yeah, they, did, they did a nice job. Okay, so that was corrected. <sighs> okay. Okay. And then um, the the... The number four violation that's that down in the basement. So that's the only plumbing issue is one in the basement. Correct. Uh, Daniel did mention that the drain was slow in the bathroom. Um, when I was there, he had no strainer in the bathtub and no stopper. And I just told him, you know, uh, a strainer is a pretty cheap fix to help keep material from going down the drain. Upon looking at the drain stack there in the basement, it didn't look like there was any failures with it. Perhaps just a, just a slow drain at that time. And um, my thinking was, if he were if the property owner, if the property owner were to bring a uh, licensed plumber and he could address that a slow drain, you know, pretty pretty simple with uh, the repair of the the stack on the west side of the the basement. Okay. 
And with respect to violation number five with the electrical thing, it is just in the basement, the problem? Correct. And you said it's, it's the light is hanging there and then another light needs a cover. Another, another box needs a cover. Okay. Yeah. So there is no issue as far as bare or exposed wires or um, looking at our chart. Um, that he hasn't lost electricity or he doesn't have over fused or under fused circuits. It's just those two items. Just those two items. Okay. And I can't say for sure if there's any uh, exposed uh, bare wire or not. Sometimes there can be with an no. open box. Not, not that you've seen, though. You didn't. Not that I've seen. The, wi the wires were in the box. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. And then smoke detectors. How many were missing? So they... They actually did get the smoke detectors installed, one on each floor, and a CO detector, one on each floor. And were those done by the compliance date of October 31st? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure on that, actually. I think they were a little bit later, but they, they did get them in. When I was there on the 11th, they were there. Okay. And when you went on the 11th, the other violations with respect to the dining room and living room floors um, still weren't corrected. And, that, that's correct, yeah. And, the, and I guess the other thing, I guess all these floor things, the, yeah. uh, what is this? This is the tile on the living room floor, the dining room and bedroom floors, and the hole in the ceiling. Those weren't done on the 11th. No, n none of that. None of that stuff was corrected. Um, you know, if if the uh, if the tenant is able to repair some of these items himself, um, fa fantastic. But when I was there, none of that was was repaired. Right. Okay. And do I have anything else for you? And the copy of the notice you gave to Chairperson Rasmussen of your notice is a true and correct copy of that notice? Yes, it is. Okay. And who was the complainant um, that brought these matters to your attention? Was it the tenant? I believe it was the tenant who uh, made, it, made a call into our office on October 22nd, and I actually included that complaint. Um, for Ms. Rasmus in there. It's in there. Yep. All right. Um, okay. I don't have any other questions for you. Thank you. Looks like that started as heat not working properly, gas smell in the home. Correct. Okay. Well, you're saying that was repaired by the compliance date yes ma'am they, okay. they brought in um, four seasons and uh, they, they did a real nice job okay thank you mm -hmm. Jim go ahead with your question I have a question about the hole in the ceiling um, did you notice was the insulation proper past that hole in the ceiling or was the insulation open and no insulation in that area was was there water intrusion was there any mold buildup so I included in the photos, um, looks like maybe Tara has them right now, but um, there is actually a picture of some plastic bins on the floor. Those bins on the floor were to collect the rainwater that comes through the roof. So um, water was definitely infiltrating through the roof. Uh, the tenant was trying to, you know, capture the, the, the rainwater as best as he could. There is insulation in that roof. Um, if you can... You can see it in the photograph. Uh, there was um, cellulose insulation that had gotten wet. So, um, yeah, I saw the photo. I'm just wondering how. Yeah. No ceiling can hold up cellulose and keep the place insulated properly. And right. Any, any idea if you saw mold? I, you know, we don't uh, have any uh, methods at City of Los Inspections for identifying mold, but I didn't. I did not see anything that resembled mold. Thank you. Yes, sir. Committee members, any additional questions for inspections? Okay. And we'll um, conclude the testimony from our inspections witness. And uh, 
Next up, we have, let me switch to my screen here. Uh, next up, we'll have Ted and Margaret Bowman. Um, and so your microphone is on, on your table. Our experience with those is that you have to have them pretty close to you to be able to be heard. They're not super sensitive like these other ones are. Um, so you can go ahead and uh, um, offer your response to what you've heard here. And uh, then the committee may have some questions for you as well. Sure. Uh, do you have a list that somebody's written down that I can just make sure I cover them all? <laughs> sure. We'll bring you a copy of the notice. Let's see if I have an extra one. Or Adam, do you have an extra copy of the notice? I think mine's all written on. I have a bad case of CRC. <laughs> some people call it CRS, but I don't use CS. <laughs> I don't Here I found one, Adam. I can give it to him. I have the one from the file also. If... I'll take some of them that I can remember. Okay, well, she's going to bring you a copy of the notice that went out. Okay. And can and you please speak closer to the mic? The, to, uh, you pull, it, pull it right up to you because it's not okay. real sensitive. Thank you. Even a little closer. But... Right. Uh, I'd like to uh, go ahead and start with the hole in the roof and the insulation problem. I've had two different people come out to try to fix that. Now, the last tenant was there for a year, paid zero rent, and left that place a pigsty. Now, whoever put that piece of board across it, I have no idea. Uh, prior to that, uh, oh, I don't think there's probably anybody in here that remembers a fella named Snipe that worked for the uh, garbage company, LB. Uh, he lived there for over 10 years. And uh, I gave him a real cut in his rent. And I mean a, a bigger cut than I gave Dan. Uh, I gave Dan $250 a month cut in his rent. Hmm? No, 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 no. Leopard gave bigger than that. Uh, and, and Dan is a very smart fella. He wants to learn to do things, but uh, he's a... Uh, uh, what, what did you call him? Uh, 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 something blind. He's, yeah, uh, and technically. Uh, so he can do close work. Uh, I had him, uh, uh, the, the last person that was in there uh, took it as their personal property, and I was not allowed on it. Our son, and you'll have in the police record somewhere, went over to uh, submit the first eviction notice, which was handwritten. Now, the one that Dan's got, you can find it on uh, your uh, Wisconsin legal forms or something like that. It's 15 pages long. And uh, anyway. Hmm? So yeah. I, have, I have a question, I guess. Um, there Maybe there's a, a lack of clarity on the prior tenants, but so you had had a tenant that had lived there 10 years. And now was that tenant receiving a reduction in his rent for conditions in the property that were Very subpar? much so. Now, I bought this house nearly 40 years ago, back when they uh, uh, had an elderly project where they would go out and fix houses, bring them up to standard, electricity, plumbing, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Uh, so it started out in some pretty good shape. Okay, uh, so, but the tenant that lived there for 10 years was receiving a reduction in the rent for conditions in the property that were subpar. Yeah. yeah, we own a little store, and uh, his part was to, he, he was a train guy, okay, and uh, his part 
Okay, so I guess I'm having trouble following. The, the work in the store, I mean, if there was work done in the store, is actually irrelevant to this hearing. What I'm asking you is the tenant that lived there for 10 years. Yes. Did that tenant receive a reduction in the rent for conditions in the property that needed repair? There were no conditions that needed to be repaired, but he was supposed to take care of it. His reduction, uh, that house today would rent for $800. We gave him a reduction down to three fifty. And uh, So was that reduction in the rent because he worked for you, like a salary for no, the work? No, 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 no. Then why was his rent cheaper than average? Yeah, he was a friend. Okay, uh, but the reduction that that person received was not for conditions that were needing repair. Correct. Okay, correct. so then the last tenant who had that lived there for... That is about, though, when the, uh, the leak started, uh, and uh, <laughs> they just put a bucket under it. We've had two different people out there to try to stop it, okay? I know where it is. I was a contract for many years, and uh, uh, I roof the back side of the house myself. When okay. I was in college, I put roofing on. I know about as much as anybody does. I did not put the aluminum roof cap on it because I was getting ready, you know, to go in and do the other side. Okay. And then it would have gone down, and that that's where that leak is. Uh, we've had at least two uh, people know how to fix it come out there and it still leaks. Well, Okay, so then you had a tenant who lived there for a year but did not pay their rent and you evicted that person. Yeah, and they tore the house. Oh. Okay, and so that person left it in some level of disrepair. Yes. yes. When did that person leave? Well, uh, shortly after we gave him his um, eviction notice. No, he didn't get out right away. No, he didn't get out. Right. No. Uh, uh, honey, please, please, please. Okay, I'm sorry. The boss, the boss, the boss, <laughs> the boss, the boss. Okay. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> he called the Wassa police station and had him escorted away and filed judgment against him for, I don't know, about four different things. And okay. one of them was for trespassing. Okay. And it's <laughs> well, and I guess the, the, the reason I asked that question okay. is I'm trying to establish how long of a period of time elapsed between the time that person moved and this tenant came. Very oh, goodness gracious. This tenant says he moved in in June of 2021? Yeah, this, this guy moved out probably... Uh, just before it started to really get cold. No, uh, they huh? remember they they were out sometime between um, December the 25th and January the 1st, and they left a live Christmas tree on with lights on and no water. Okay, so is that January of 2021? Yeah. Are we in 22? Uh, <laughs> Yeah. 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 So uh, between January of 2021 and June of 2021, when this tenant moved in, was that house empty or occupied? Empty. 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 It was in such bad shape on it. Trying to get the stuff cleaned up. We had the house for sale because uh, COVID for, uh, has just ruined our business. Okay? We needed some money. So we had. A regular real estate sign like this out in the front yard, and the guy kept taking it down. And uh, then when I, uh, I I lose my train of thought, but anyway, uh, they moved out, and we don't know when. And the way I found out about that is uh, the truant officer from Wasa West School District, which is just down the street from uh, this house uh, called me and uh, he said, you know, we've got a problem with this house. Do you, do you own it? I said, yeah. He says, well, we think we smell gas 
and uh, uh, there's nobody there. So they called the fire department, the fire department got in, and uh, <clears throat> there's no gas there, okay? The house stunk that bad. But anyway, uh, that was the first time I found out about it. And this was in December or January after this person had left? Oh, goodness gracious. It, it, it was sometime in January, but the first part of January. So between, between January of 2021 and June of 2021, when you re-rented the home, what did you do to fix everything that was wrong? We were what, so messed, what repairs did you make? We, we were, were so messed up, we don't know what to do. All the stuff, we, there's yeah. a lot of stuff that we, we cleaned up yeah. and had to throw away. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the uh, uh, Harders brought their largest roll-on dump truck out and we filled it up. Okay. Now, uh, they considered that house as theirs. And, well, no, you know, we're starting to get cold. He called and said, there's no pilot light on in the furnace. Well, that should have gone through this skull. There are not pilot lights in furnaces anymore. So I went over and got it started, found that there was a, a about a, a $10 part that could be replaced. But so that they would have heat, I jumpered that. And it had nothing to do with other than smelling or getting it, you know, something getting too warm or something like that. So you were in the home when you did that work? Uh, that was for the other tenants. Right, was, but was, you were aware of the condition of the property during that time? No, you no. wouldn't let me come upstairs. You're just in the downstairs. We had to have a police escort to check out the house. Yeah. Whenever... And then, uh, uh, okay. The oh, pull the microphone a little bit closer to you. They're having trouble hearing you on okay. the recording. The uh, uh, tenant that was there for about 10 years, oh, he was so proud when he got to 70. Well, he died at 72. And his daughter knew that we were going to sell the house. She had it cleaned up, carpets. The whole works, and uh, uh, we we had quite a few years of rendering, and we found it much cheaper to get them to where they don't want to live there anymore and get gone than it is to get an attorney and go through this rigmarole of trying to get them out of there. Now that may sound crazy, but it's the truth. So yes, are you saying that to create a condition where the tenant no. is uncomfortable enough there to leave on their own, is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. So I wouldn't say the only way we found out that they weren't there is when the uh, officer in the farming got inside and he says, there's nobody living here. They, so, they had dogs in the house. They allowed the dogs oh. to poop in the house. Ma'am, can you use the microphone, please? Here, that, oh, way, that way we can hear you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. But this really doesn't have anything to do with Dan. But the people well, that's, that's what we need to focus on. Is yeah. We're trying to yeah. focus on the condition of the property when the current tenant moved in. And so, you know, what was happening there when the one-year guy lived there, I guess, is less relevant. But the, the point I'm trying to make and what I was trying to ask you is the home was, to clarify, the home sat empty for approximately five or six months before this tenant moved in? Probably less than that. And it, you said from December or January of 2021 to June of 2021 was when he moved in. And during that time, other than throwing out garbage or abandoned property, you didn't make any repairs? We had to clean the house out. I mean, I mean we, we cleaned it up as much as we could. Okay. So, but given the circumstance that existed there, okay. with the leaking roof and the, the, given the situation there, yeah. why did you re-rent the home before it was fixed in June? Because Dan's dad... Pull the microphone up, please. Dan's dad was going to fix it. Okay? 
I'm in my 80s. I don't get on the roof anymore. <laughs> so uh, it didn't get fixed. Now. Uh, and Dan had someone living there with him that that um, tried to fix it, or said he fixed it, and we paid him for it. But it, then it started leaking again. Yeah. But that was later that it started leaking. So this is the roof you're talking about. We're yeah. talking about. So Dan's, the, so the tenant's dad was going to fix the roof. Yes. What about the rest of it? There's there's 12 or 13 violations here. Okay, the carpets were cleanable, but they took them out because they wanted to refloor it. Who they, took them out? Uh, Dan, Dan and his family, and friends. The. Uh, uh, we were a little misread, or, uh, misrepresented when uh, I questioned Dan about some of this stuff. And oh yeah, he's got all kinds of friends. He's got all kinds of friends, but he doesn't have the friends he needs. Okay, that's uh, one thing that uh, we have a history of doing. Uh, we have two boys helping us now. Uh, I don't know if anybody ever, ever been at Hobby Connection, but go on to uh, hobbyconnect.com and you'll see a beautiful layout downstairs that has not been taken care of for over three years. We went nearly four years without any income. Uh, Rothschild officers came to the door and said, you can't be open. So what do we do? She just retired and we we relied upon the income from the store. Uh, we had four rent houses. Two of them were not paying one penny of rent. The uh, third and the fourth one were doing it when they could. When, you know, I've always been self-employed, except when I was in the Air Force. Uh, I didn't get a stimulus check. I see this advertised all the time on the on the computer. Apply for this four thousand dollars. We haven't gotten anything. So therefore, that's why it takes us a while to uh, <laughs> another part of this thing. Not, not, I hate to get off onto different things, but you know what's setting off the West Coast and the East Coast? Well, carb. Go we we need to sit, we need to stay with this hearing on okay. items that are relevant to the hearing. So They're going to be taken care of, okay? Dan and I have discussed this, but I tell you, uh, Dan has got a good, good mind. He just doesn't see, see well. Well, and I guess and that... we will get it done. That That's part of it. You know, I guess I... The, the question I have is, now you apparently had made, it sounds like, verbal agreements with the tenant and the tenant's father mm -hmm. to do some of this work already. Mm -hmm. The tenant apparently has some degree of visual impairment. Visual impairment? The tenant has some degree of visual impairment? Yes. You, yes, yes, he's legally blind. Okay. Yeah. And so, but your expectation is that he will take on this list of work. We're taking it on together. We're taking it on together. Uh, the window sills at the alley uh, was listed in here somewhere. Uh, Dan cut them, and I think he painted them white, and I told him, do not install them. I want to install them to make sure they're installed right. So little by little, and uh, one of Dan's favorite things is, you know, we got to work at my speed. And then he's talking about his speed. Well, my speed, I'm good for about two hours a day. <laughs> and anyway, so we uh, we do a lot of talking and looking and thinking, and he's got dreams for that house. Uh, we were in there a couple of days ago. Uh, of course, uh, they're, they're going to uh, be painting uh, within the next couple of weeks on the inside of the house, okay? Uh, and entirely, I mean, so even though the ceilings have not been repaired, you're painting? That spot is not that big. 
but it will be taken care of. There's snow on the roof now, okay? I know what I put over the top of it and probably where it's coming from. And, uh, <clears throat> so your expectation is that the tenant would continue to occupy this property when he returns? Um, he wants to. With, with the, in, the, in its current state? Oh. Yeah. I mean, to be worked on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he says, he's a real good drywaller. Well, he's going to prove it to me because I know how to fix that hole and fix it right. Okay? Okay. Well, uh, committee members, Tara, do you have any additional questions for the landlord? Committee members? Okay. I, I have a couple. Sure. Do you have a written lease with Mr. Humpy? Yes. It, uh, Yes. Yes. If, okay. If it's a yes or no question. Yes, you have a written lease. Yes. What is the amount of rent that he's supposed to pay in his written lease? Six fifty. Okay. Month. Now, now you said he got a two hundred and fifty dollar cut in his rent. What does that mean? That means that if, if we had sold that house, which we wanted to do, so we could get some money in our coffers, or rent it. If you check on the properties over the Wasson West area. Uh, between there and uh, whatever it is, you'll find, and, and, and I, uh, I am a former real estate broker, so I know how to figure out what things are going for now. And they're going from $800 up to $1,200. Okay, so to simplify this, you think your property is worth $800 to $850 a month rented, so you think you're giving him a break on his rent by renting this for $650, is Correct. that right? Correct. Okay. And he moved into it in, in a sort of a, a bad condition. Yeah, hard way, yeah. And you just said, if you fix it, I'll give you more of a cut in rent, right? No, that's what the cut in the rent was for. For him to do work on the property, yes. so he, you had him move into this place, yes. telling him he could run it for six fifty, but he has to do an undetermined amount of work to fix it up. No, no. Uh, he and I will fix it up. Uh, Dan can't see more than twelve inches in front of his face or so, it, it, you know, in close things. So I don't want him doing anything that I can't be there with him to do. But I'm going to show him how to do it. Now, <coughs> All right. I, I think that's good. I, can I go back and ask, Mr. Yeah. Humpy, are you still there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I want to yes, ask. I, I want to ask you a question. Were there carpets on the floors in the dining room and the other room bedrooms when you moved in? Yes, and they were. And I'm going to tell you, those carpets dumped on cat here, cat pants. The okay. one in my uh, one okay. office off of the dining room, that had cat, that had shit stains on the carpet. That I told him I was tearing that out because of the feces on that carpet. Okay, and, and did smell. he did he give you permission to take those out? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, he did. Okay. Now here's my other question: You moved in. Were you aware this place was in bad condition? I didn't know it was this bad, but I look at it as my own house. Okay, because I'm just, I'm a little puzzled. You filed for rent abatement, but it sounds like you and the landlord have all these deals and agreements. So mm -hmm. you want your rent abated until the time he fixes this up? If we can get it fixed in a decent manner, yeah. Well, well, you know what this hearing is about is you've asked to have your rent reduced by a certain amount until such time as the property is made tidy again. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. That's it. I have no further questions. Okay. Committee members, do you have any additional questions? Okay. If not, then we'll conclude the testimony of the landlord. Um, this committee, um, with regard to this matter, deliberates in closed session. Um, so we will um, take a motion to move into closed session to 
um, engage in that deliberation. Would someone read the closed session motion? Oh, go ahead, Jim. Oh, I'll read it. Caitlin's going to bring you one. Now, if uh, after your closed session and so on, as uh, the inspector has shown some photos, I have photos prior to, I mean, where he took over and that sort of thing, uh, just to give you an idea. Okay. So you have photo evidence that you brought today? Oh, they're no. on my phone, but uh, I don't have pictures big like those. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, the, uh, the four pieces of floor tile in the kitchen that were missing, when I went in, uh, the first two things we did was on the inside, and that was to get the plumbing going. Okay, uh, the uh, pipe that comes down out of the kitchen sink and goes over should go up to the other sink. They had it going into a five-gallon bucket, and that five-gallon bucket has been run over you know, a number of times, that loosens the tile. So the, the they you refer to is the prior tenant? Yes. Okay. And then the other one about where the uh, caulking is, uh, getting the plumbing cleaned out from the kitchen sink to the main caused me to have to pound a hole into the side of the uh, uh, the downspout, or uh, you know, the, the downward pipe. Now, I have a huge branch, and I broke it. So, so I broke the thing out. You performed the work that caused the damage to the stack. To the what? And not a plumber. The drain stack. You performed. So the opening in the drain stack. I put that with the putty around the edge. You had caused that breakage. Trying to it, clean it? It had already been plugged up with some kind of black gooby stuff, okay? So we knew that that had to come out of there, but it's so old uh, that uh, it, it broke. Did now, you call, did when you we contact finally got a, the... Uh, at, at any point in that process, did you contact a plumber? No. All right, um, we'll go ahead with the closed session motion. And go ahead, Jim. I move we go into closed session pursuant to section 19.85 sub 1 sub A of the Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of considering the following. Deliberating concerning a case which was the subject of any judicial or quasi-judicial uh, trial or hearing before the governmental body. Okay, we have a motion for closed session. Do we have a second? Second by Herbst. We'll do a roll call vote for closed session. McElhaney? Aye. Wadinski? Aye. Herbst? Aye. I'll vote aye as well. Alder Peckham being virtual um, cannot participate. Votes aye but cannot participate in closed session. Um, yeah, the well, I can't follow you in there. No, you can't. You can't. But we'll be back shortly. Um, so we will um, reconvene in open session after our deliberation and present the findings on this, tr on this hearing. So I'm good to go or?